Hello and welcome to the session in which we're going to keep working in chapter 7 and in this session we're going to look at the bond rating. So in the prior two sessions we looked at bond and bond valuation, how do you find the price of the bond. We look at bond features, now we're going to look at bond ratings. So what are bond ratings? What is this topic is about? In a nutshell, if you really think of your credit score, hopefully, hopefully you know what your credit score is. Basically your credit score is a number assigned to you about your credit worthiness so so if you want to go out and buy a house or buy a car or borrow money what's going to happen the bank will pull your credit the bank will pull your credit and you have what's called a credit score and the credit score ranges from the maximum, let's see, the maximum is 850. That's if you have an excellent credit score. So ranges from 400, you could be below 400, but that's not good, up until 850. So sometimes banks might say, we will not give you a loan unless you have a minimum of 700. So the better your credit score, um, uh, the more likely you're going to be given a loan because you have a better credit. Better credit means, um, means uh, your credit of defaulting in the, past, uh, in the future, the, the probability of defaulting is low. How do they know this? They know this based on past performance. Bonds, bonds because they borrow money, but, but bonds are not individuals. What happened is bonds, they also have a score. So every company will, will issue bonds and a third party will give you a score. It's called rating. They'll give you a rating, just like your score. Okay, so let's see how it works. Firms frequently pay for their debt for their debt rated. The two leading bond rating firms are Moody's and S&P, Standard and Poor. So those are the two rating agencies. Rating agencies are agencies that, those are the main ones. There are other smaller ones, but those are the main ones. Those are the rating agencies that assign the rate, basically assign a grade to your bond. And what do they assess? What are they assessing? The debt rating, are an assessment of the credit worthiness of the corporate issuer. What is credit worthiness? It is based on how likely the firm is to default and the protection creditors have in the event of a default. So the credit worthiness is how likely are you to default? How likely are you not to pay your bill? Not to pay your bill in this situation, your bill is the bond. How, how likely is it? Okay. It's important to recognize that bond rating are concerned only with the possibility of default. So they only deal with the possibility of default, not they don't deal with interest rate risk. Remember, interest rate risk is the risk that interest rate might change. And as a result, your bond could go up or down in value. The risk is going down. So differentiate between the interest rate risk and the risk of defaulting. The possibility of defaulting has nothing to do with the interest rate risk. So bond rating do not address interest rate risk. As a result, the price of a highly rated bond can still be quite volatile. So the point is a bond could be volatile. Volatile means it could go up, it could go down because of interest rate risk. And interest rate risk is the risk of interest rate changing. What the bond agencies focus, focuses on the possibility of default. They will try to assign you a probability of you defaulting. And the lower the probability, the better off you are and the higher is your grade. So bond rating are constructed from information supplied by the corporation. The rating classes and some information concern are shown in the following table. So let's take a look at this table to see how it works. Hopefully you can, you'll be able to read it on my screen, otherwise look in your book. Okay, so for example, this is how as the, the, we have two examples here. We have the S&P rating and we have Moody's rating. They're similar, but kind of they're a little bit different. For example, the highest grade for the S&P, it's triple A and double A capital. Moody's triple A and AA, basically A and lowercase a. Okay. So they basic, they basically say the same thing. So if you have triple A, that rated triple A has the highest rating capacity to pay interest and principal is extremely strong. This is what triple A is. It means you're in good shape. That's the that's the score that's the score that they're giving you. If, if they gave you double A, that rated as double A has a very strong capacity to pay interest and, and principal together with the highest rating, this group comprises the high grade bonds. So also 
triple A and A, uh, triple A and double A are really good. Now we go down to A. Companies with credit rating of A has a strong capacity to pay interest and principal, although it's somewhat more susceptible to the adverse effect of changes in circumstances, and economic condition than that, uh, than that in high rated categories. So they could still pay, but they might be adverse negatively by circumstances, by economic changes. Now we go down to triple A. Triple A, what does triple A says? Triple A says that rated triple, I'm sorry, not triple A, triple B is regarded as having an, an, an adequate adequate capacity to pay interest and repay principal, whereas it's normally exhibit adequate protection parameter, adverse economic condition, or changing circumstances are more likely to lead to a weakened capacity to pay interest or to repay principal for debt in this category than in higher rated categories. These bonds are medium grade uh, obligation. So basically, they're good, but they're lower than A. So they, they, they are going to be affected more negatively and adverse financial conditions. And here they have the rest, which is less than triple, triple B. So these, um, that rated in these categories is regarded on balance as predominantly speculative with respect to capacity to pay interest and repay principal in accordance with the term of the obligation. You know, double B indicate the lowest degree of speculation, double C and C, highest degree of speculation. Obviously, C's, C's are more speculative than B's. Although such debt is likely to have some quality and protective characteristic, these are outweighed by large uncertainties of major risk exposure to adverse condition. Simply put, they're both speculative, but the C's are more speculative. So if you buy them, remember there's a good chance that you might lose everything. And D, that rated D is in default and payment of interest or principal uh, is in arrear. Once you're in a D, it means you're already in default. What does that mean for a company? What, that, what those rating means for a company as well for an investor? For a company, the higher your credit rating, the lower the interest that you have to offer. Because if you are really good, triple A, you'll pay low interest rate, low interest rate. If you are in the lower category, you have to pay higher interest rate to compensate the risk that the investors that the creditors are giving you for the investor if you buy triple a or double a or a you have more protection but low return if you buy b you have less protection you're taking more risk more risky less protection and but you're, you may get high interest rate payment but not for long you may you may go until default so this is what you have to know. The highest, the highest, the highest a firm that can have is triple A. Okay, that's that's obviously the best, triple A. Such debt is judged to be the best quality and have the lowest degree of risk. For example, the 100 year Bell South issue we discussed earlier were rated triple A. This rating is not awarded very often. Okay, in 2014, only four non financial institutions had triple A rating double a or aa rating indicate very good quality debt and are much more in common so most are double a even the u.s used to the u.s government used to be triple a then they brought it down one notch a large part of corporate borrowing takes takes the form of low grade or junk bonds and these low grade corporate bonds uh, if these low low grade corporate bonds are rated at all they are all rated below investment grade by major rating agencies investment grades bonds are bonds that are rated at least triple b or bba by baa by moody's okay rating agencies now bear in mind don't always agree okay so so when an, when an agency assign a grade to a bond it means that that's what they think the uh, the probability of the fault that's all what they're doing they may not agree because that's an estimate. They may not agree. To illustrate, some bonds are known as crossover or 5B's bond. The reason is that they are rated triple B by one rating agencies and double B by another, a split rating. For example, in March 2014, real estate investment companies Omega Healthcare Investors sold, in, sold an issue of a 10-year bond noted triple B by S&P and BB1 by Moody's, so different rating different rating now bear in mind once they 
once they once they issue a rating it doesn't mean it's going to stay the same what's going to happen they're going to reevaluate your position on a regular basis so a bond credit rating agency can can change the uh, your rating they, it could go up or it could go down for example on january 2014 moody's cut the bond rating on playstation 4 manufacturer sony from triple b3 to double from baa3 to ba1 lowering the company's bond rating from investment grade to junk bond status bonds that drop into junk territory like this are called falling angels that's the term all those sales of the new ps4 were a positive factor noted by moody's the rating agencies felt the majority of sony's core business such as tv mobile phone digital camera and personal computers face difficulty ahead and because of that they lowered their ratings okay so credit ratings are important because the fault really do occur and when they do investors could can lose heavily for example in 2000 amerisurf food distribution which supplied restaurants such as burger king with everything from burgers to give away tolls defaulted on 200 million in junk bonds so they borrowed money and they could not pay it after the default the bond traded at 18 cent on the dollar what does that mean it means if you lend them a dollar you can only collect 18 cents so if you bought a bond for a thousand dollar you will get 18 percent of it which is 18 cent of a dollar you'll get 180 dollars so notice your losses are quite large leaving investors with more than 160 million in losses okay and what's worse amerisurf case the bond has been issued only four months earlier thereby making amerisurf on ncaa champion although that might be a good thing for college basketball teams such as university of kentucky and the bond market it means no coupon at all and that's not good for the investors so that's bad defaulting very quickly uh, but this is basically what bond rating is the higher your bond rating the better off a company is but remember bond rating could change and how do they come up with this bond rating they look at your cash flow they look at your financial ratios you remember we talked about liquidity ratios in the prior session liquidity and we looked about solvency ratios we looked at the cash ratios so what they do those firms they look at all these ratios when they assign when they assign um, a rating and that's basically it for this session the next session we're going to look at is again more bonds and we're going to look at different types of bonds we're going to have different types of bonds that we're going to be working with such as government bonds zero coupon bonds floating grade bonds and other type of bonds it's bonds you have all sorts of all sorts of bonds so be ready for that